Hi there, my name is Nicole Kiebert with the Moose Jaw Journey to Hope team, and this is Voices of Hope. So my name is Alicia Dollar. I am 32 years old. I'm a mature student at the University of Virginia in my final year of studies, pursuing a Bachelor of Sport and Recreation Studies, majoring in Sport and Recreation Management, as well as a Diploma in Business Administration. So I pride myself on my volunteer work. I'm an avid volunteer with many uh, organizations. I've been volunteering with the University of Virginia Rams for 11 years. I started as a marketing team member in Dolphin Game Days and events. Then I became the Rams TV host for a few seasons, seasons, which was a, a lot of fun. And now for the last five years, I have sat on the board of directors where I became the second female to ever do so. I'm also on the board of directors for Regina Summer Stage, a local musical theater company here as the director of social media. I also volunteer for the musical each summer, taking on various roles such as performer, backstage crew, assistant stage manager, and set designer, usually a combination of a few of those. Um, I am also involved in the same capacity for Regina Little Theatre for one of their plays during the yearly season. Um, as well, I'm the co-manager of the Scottish Pavilion for Mosaic, which is the Festival of Cultures here in Regina. And I'm usually involved in different capacities for the various film events that come to Regina, such as the Two Months Briar, um, Scottish Time of Hearts, those things. Um, and previously, I have been heavily involved in the Regina Riot Women's Football Program, starting in 2015 as the Game Day Coordinator. Then I was hired as a general manager following the 2016 season, and I held that position for three seasons. I stepped down um, last year to focus on finishing my degree, um, but my work with the Riot and the Rams kind of solidified that decision for me to go back to university two years ago um, to pursue this as a career, as I had so much fun doing it for free. I thought maybe I could do it for some money. <laughs> but also staying busy has also been um, how I've coped with my uh, mental health and managed it over the last 20 years. So I have depression and I am a suicide survivor. So before I go into details um, about my story, I like to insert a disclaimer um, that it can be a trigger for some. Um, it's my personal story of depression and suicide, and it does cover some detailed explanations of my suicide attempts. So whenever I tell this story in public, I just like to get a trigger warning before it begin. So with that out of the way, uh, my story began 24 years ago. Um, I don't remember a lot of the early signs and details, but my mom does tell me that I started showing signs of depression around eight years old. I was bullied for a majority of my elementary school years. Uh, I wasn't able to really communicate my feelings or the situation to anyone. Instead, I would go home, lash out at my parents and scream, I want to die. That was really the only way I could communicate it. So I thought the only way to stop the negative feelings and thoughts that I was having towards myself was to end my life. So I tried several times um, using pills, slitting my wrists, but I could never go through with those. The only way I thought I could succeed would actually end up being the worst attempt, but actually my last. So it was February 14, 2000. I was 11 years old. Um, I remember most of the day like it was yesterday. The day of, at school was a little bit of a blur, but I remember feeling numb, feeling alone, and thinking I had no one to talk to. I got home from choir after school that night, had what I thought was going to be my last meal with my family, and as my family watched TV upstairs, I went into the garage and snuck an extension cord down to my bedroom in the basement. Uh, I tied one of the ends of the cord into a noose. I removed a ceiling tile and I tied the other end to a floor dressed above. Standing on my bed, I placed the noose around my neck with one last breath, and I dropped. In those short seconds, I saw pictures of my family on a shelf in front of me, and as quickly as I made up my mind to quit, I decided just as fast to fight. In that short moment, I found the strength to stop fighting me and start fighting for me. I grabbed the cord around my neck and pulled myself as hard and as fast as I could to stand back up on my bed. After I took the noose off, I remember sliding down to the floor, holding my neck and crying for what felt like forever. I remember thinking this was the lowest point but for the first time, I also knew it, it would get better. In the moment where I wanted to end it all, it was actually my family who I thought of. I couldn't imagine them finding my body. I couldn't imagine not being with them anymore. And I couldn't imagine not being in my family anymore. My family saved my life that night, even though they wouldn't even find out about it until many years later.
My life has been impacted by my journey with depression in a lot of different ways. There's different, I've gone through different stages. So at the beginning, following that night 20 years ago, I felt ashamed for what I did. I denied it to myself that it never actually happened, that I made up the whole thing. I used to tell myself to ignore those sad feelings um, that I was having and just be happy. It was as simple as that. Back then, mental health was not something we talked about, so it took me a while to realize that I had a illness and it wasn't going to go away because I created it too. I finally opened up to someone about the experience two years later. I confided in my best friend, Courtney. She didn't come into my life until about two and a half years after my last attempt. And I think it helped me to finally open up to someone who wasn't there back then. As hard as it was to tell her, it was even more painful to, to tell the rest of my friends. Because they were the ones who had been there sitting next to me in the class as I made the decision to end my life. Because of that support though that I received from them, I was able to heal and open up about my struggles without feeling judged or ashamed. One of the positive impacts it did have was that I am finally able to sh open up and share my story. I mostly share on social media on my anniversary every year, and I have received genuine feedback about how it inspired them to open up about their experiences with mental health and suicide. A personal positive impact that this journey has had on my life is definitely building my confidence. As I struggled with being bullied um, and dealing with my depression, my self-esteem was, was very low. I thought very little of myself to the point where I didn't think I deserved to live anymore. But as I shared my story and received so much support, I gained confidence in myself and I actually started planning for my future, which I didn't before. I definitely try to appreciate life to the fullest. I consider myself a yes ma'am. I say yes to more things, knowing firsthand how quickly life can come to an end. Like I said earlier, staying busy also helps me manage my mental health. So the more I feel like I'm contributing to something greater, the lesser chance I endure my depression episodes. But I want to be clear, I'm in no way cured from depression. I still have my bad days. A lot less bad days than 20 years ago, but I still have those days where I have trouble getting out of bed, where I have to fake a smile and tell others I'm fine. Um, I talk a lot about the strengths that the 11-year-old girl had to start fighting, but I am also not immune to those bad days. However, I wholeheartedly believe that without the bad, we could not enjoy the good. So when I'm having a bad day, I also am happy that I can find the strength to cope in those bad times. So I'm going to get a little real with you guys. Um, I mean, what else have I been doing? But <laughs> this is one area that my depression has negatively affected me. Um, it's my dating life. I have had to overcome a lot of personal struggles and battles while trying to navigate new relationships. I talk about how I have a great support system. My family and friends, they are my saving grace. But when it comes to letting someone else in romantically, it's much more personal for me. Because of that trauma I've suffered, I sometimes get scared and put up walls to protect myself. And in doing so, I push people away, um, which is probably the worst part about my journey and it's something I have been working on a lot recently. So I have been impacted negatively and positively, but I can honestly say I wouldn't change a thing. I am who I am today because of those struggles and the strength that I had to overcome them. So the main thing I've learned um, about mental health in today's world is it's not universal. It affects people differently. Over the years, I've learned what works for me and what doesn't. Um, I've learned my tricks and triggers, as I like to call it. Triggers are what causes my depressive episodes, and tricks are the coping mechanisms that help me feel. However, as I said, it's not universal. What helped me last time may not even help me this time. But what I've learned over the last 24 years is to trust myself. Uh, it is in my body, my mind, and my advice is to do what works for you. And don't be afraid to try new things. In today's world of COVID especially, I've learned new tricks and triggers. Even after 24 years, I'm still learning new things about the mental health as we adapt to new changes. Positive outlets um, in my life, this one's easy. It's been sports. Uh, I played many sports in my childhood. Uh, basketball was the one that helped me the most. Um, I think learning a new skill, feeling a part of a team, and succeeding in that sport to give me that confidence that I have been lacking. Uh, in the last decade, I moved from athlete to administrator, and my roles with the Riot and Rams uh, continue to be the positive outlet I needed to keep fighting. So my mental health declined quite a bit um, around 2017, so about three years ago. I was dealing with unemployment, I'd just been laid off, um, grief, I had lost a few people. Um, 
close to me. Um, but luckily that was the year I had accepted the new position with the Riot as general manager. So I dove into that new role with the team and was busy learning how to run a football team. Even though I was struggling, my love and passion for the team and the sports kept me going. And for the first time in years, I felt like I was exactly where I was supposed to be. I was at my happiest when I was planning to imagine game days events and eventually the entire football team. So that following year, I did decide to switch careers and follow my passion and pursue sport management. And I'm definitely in a better place now because of it. My message of hope for others. Um, this past February, I celebrated 20 years since the last time I attempted suicide. It is a day I celebrate every year to remind myself the strength of that 11 year old girl. She allowed me to continue my life um, and tell my story to hopefully inspire just one person. This is what that day is really about for me, to let you know that you are not alone, that it is okay to not feel okay sometimes, to remind you to practice kindness on others, but most importantly on yourselves. I also want to show others it's okay to talk about mental health and be vulnerable. My main focus has always been to end the stigma around mental health. I would not be ashamed to tell my family I was a, if I was diagnosed with cancer, just as I am not um, now, not ashamed to tell others that I was diagnosed with depression and I am a suicide survivor. That is why I continue to tell my story and I thank you for allowing me to do so again today.